I've got two older brothers. They were always golfing, so I just wanted to be with them all the time. And so I, I golfed, and my dad golfs, and my older brothers golf. So that was like the perfect foursome, really. But then when I was playing with my brothers, it was kind of me just trying to like hit it further than them. But they were so much older than me; it was never going to happen. She just wanted to always be with the boys, so she did things a lot faster than probably most kids her age. And so in the summertime, she just wanted to always be with her brothers. And so, you know, they said, if you want to be with us, then you have to play with us. And so they made her play from the white tees, and she was probably four or five years old. And yeah. Jimmy would go out and play with her on weekends. I'd say like I just went into like local tournaments around town, like I would play in those and I would win those and I'm like, oh, okay, like whatever. But um, then I started playing in bigger and bigger tournaments and when I, once I started doing better in those and like being, you know, pretty high up in those, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm actually okay at this. Just with Jacqueline being from East Lansing, obviously we just always knew about her. So my relationship started pretty early with her you know, just knowing as soon as she got onto the golf scene, just really knowing that she was going to have the potential to be a Spartan and to be on our team. And of course, we always kept our fingers crossed that she'd want to stay in East Lansing and not go somewhere else. But her family is filled with Spartans. And so we just tried to grow that relationship within the NCAA rules over that time period before she got to Michigan State. Your player-coach relationship, that's like one of the biggest you know, parts of being a student athlete, you want to go somewhere that you have like a really good relationship with the coaches. So I'd say that was a huge point in determining where you know, where to go to school. I'd say it was pretty Michigan State all the way. I just wanted her to be happy and go someplace where she would be happy. And in hindsight, we always told her, if you ever got hurt, you want to pick a school that you always want to be at um, and that you'll be happy at, not knowing that this would ever happen to her. We all knew she was tough, but I mean, after going, after seeing her go through what she just went through, she's tougher than I ever thought. After my freshman year, my, my, it was weird. I kept telling my parents, like, my body's breaking down, my body's breaking down, I don't know why. And I was really athletic growing up. I never, ever got hurt. And then I just started getting hurt all the time. I mean, we just couldn't believe that she was getting so hurt. And then last summer, she, um, what they thought was bursitis, she got another cortisone shot, and then two weeks after that, burst, what they thought was bursitis, um, a lymph node raised and so and swelled, and that's when everything went fast forward. Initially, we went to a general surgeon, who's a friend of ours, um, and we just wanted to take the lymph node out just because it was enlarged and it hurt. So then he ordered a CAT scan. A CAT scan and then uh, a biopsy and it was revealed uh, when the biopsy came back that it was Hodgkin's. I was talking to Dr. Covan about what Jack had and what was going on and what the white blood cell count was. You know, we, we were, it, would, it, didn't, it wasn't like a positive thing that, oh, it might just be this lump that developed. She was diagnosed stage two because the lymphoma was from the waist up. She had areas of swollen lymph nodes on both sides of her neck and um, a quite a large mass in her mediastinum, which is in her chest. I was more in shock because I think I'm a late reactor, so I was like more in shock. My mom like reacted right away, and so I'm sure that was like, I don't know, I don't even know what she went through there, but um, like I can't even really imagine like a daughter, but yeah, I don't know. I just kind of react, I kind of shut down and then just, I don't know, it was pretty sad for a while. Everything seems pretty meaningless when your child's life's on the line. It was horrible. Oh, we were devastated. We were, yeah, we were devastated. It was, you know, right away when you hear the C word, you feel like, you know, you think of death, obviously, and, and that's, you know, that's what we thought. I mean, there's so many cancer commercials, and you're always like, oh, whatever. I was like, oh, I'm 21. like. It's never gonna happen to me. Um, honestly, hearing the word, and like just for me, it's like you feel like it's a death sentence. And I like went home and um, like was pretty sad for probably a couple of days. And then um, lymphoma was pretty treatable. So then I just stopped feeling bad for myself and just started like you have to fight it because the other option isn't really the best either. So you had I just had to fight it really 
and get through the get through the treatments. I'd say the most challenging part was honestly like the unknowns, like the unknowns of like what chemo is gonna be like or what the side effects of chemo are. Because once you're down and you have it and you have a plan, like you're ready to go. But the unknowns of everything, I mean, like that's why you don't sleep at night. At least that's for me. Like I was just so afraid of the unknowns really. Before she got started, they told her, I mean, they had to tell her everything that the risks that were involved, the side effects that were involved, and um, I think that was probably the first time I've ever seen, saw her really scared. I've been asking for a dog for 22 years, probably on my Christmas list. It was at the top of my list every year. And yeah, so finally in September of last year, I got um, the sweetest girl in the world, her name is Gigi, and she's a white lab, and she's just like the sweetest thing. Even when I was like, you know, like struggling with chemo and taking tons of naps and just like exhausted, she'd get me out of bed every morning even if I wasn't feeling good. So she was like, a, she was a huge part. Gigi seemed to have this sense when Jacqueline was down, I mean, she would come and curl up right next to Jacqueline or if Jacqueline wasn't feeling well from her chemo, and she was, you know, sleeping. Gigi would come and, you know, just lay next to her. And uh, I mean, I think, you know, if you ask Jacqueline, I think Jacqueline will tell you that she, that Gigi really, really helped her. Another great thing just about me going through this was just the support that I received from everyone. A friend from Wisconsin, she actually created their wristbands. They said set is strong on them. So I was able to give those out to people here in the community, just anyone honestly anywhere and we gave out over 1200 of them so that was honestly amazing seeing the support there but I know like I know some basketball players wore them some football players wore them like almost every athletic team I know that there was probably someone that wore them even on the sidelines Tom Izzo had his on so I'd say that's really why I like didn't really give up either it's just because so many people were supporting me throughout the community and even beyond I'd say that was like a big big part of it for me my parents did so much I couldn't even I don't know, I probably couldn't even explain everything they did, but they always like hosted things for like the team to come over so I could still see the team. And like we had cookie decorating parties or we like painted pumpkins or just like little things that I would look forward to. Um, that seems like really small now, but like in the, like in it, they were like, I looked forward to them like the whole week just to get better. There were a couple days that, you know, they didn't come because Jacqueline would say, I don't feel good. And I knew she would feel better if they were here. And they told me, if you ever need us, call us. So I did, and they were here. And she was so glad to see them. So I could never repay them. Our son's married to Nick Saban's daughter. And Jacqueline would get frequent calls from, from Nick. And I just remember one afternoon or one mid-morning, he was driving to you know to the stadium for a game, and he called her. But you know he calls Jacqueline a couple times, you know, a month just to check in on her. Jacqueline's family, uh, the whole set of family, is you know family to us. I was really, really proud of the way Jacqueline sort of showed a maturity about handling her circumstance and her situation. She had a very positive attitude about it. She looked forward to. Uh, trying to get better. Uh, a lot of people around her, family and friends, were very, very supportive, which I think she certainly appreciated. Uh, but I think having a positive attitude in these kind of situations are the most important thing, and she's always been that way, and that's one of the things I love most about her. The final round of the Big Ten Women's Golf Championships underway, and Michigan State in position for a second straight team title. I was in the middle of radiation, but I was able to go to Big Tens, and so I was able to see them win, and to just watch them do such amazing things on the golf course, it was just like, oh, it was amazing seeing them win, and to see them, you know, go rush on the green, and get, you know, their trophy, and all of that, I'd say that was, that was amazing to see them do that. The big thing for us was that she felt good enough to be there, and I think that was really, really important for us, and, you know, then winning something like that is emotional, just winning and then having her there is, was, you know, like icing on the cake, I guess. And, and just having her be a part of it and having 
you know, known how hard those players worked for her and, and the whole team. It was, you know, the trophy is great, the rings are awesome. I was so happy to present her with a ring. But really, you know, what she overcame as a 22-year-old young person and what she had to go through, I mean, she's, she is a true champion. I'd say that was always the motivation to get back. I knew this cancer was treatable and I knew that it was curable. Um, so I'd say it was just a more of a matter of getting through the treatments. I'd say this was always my goal to be back here right now in August and you know be ready to you know being ready to go to school again and you know seeing friends and going to class like all the things that I missed. It's like surreal now. This morning I was playing golf with her and I was really you know just happy to be out there with her and you know I was just thinking this is like this is awesome and regardless of what happens with her golf this year it's we're just thrilled that she is that she's a survivor now and she's okay and you know, and that's something that, that she's going to carry with her for the rest of her life is, you know, being a cancer survivor. It's even, like, weird for me to say that I'm a survivor because, you know, sometimes I don't even feel like I did have cancer. But this is, like, what I've been longing to say. Like, I've been longing to say I'm cancer-free. I've been longing to say that I'm a survivor almost, you know, a year back. That was what, you know, me, my family, my friends, you know, everyone that supported me, that's what everyone was, you know, waiting to hear. So I'd say really to be able to say that I'm a survivor. It's like pretty amazing for me to look back and to see like what I had to go through and everything, but to be a survivor, it's all, really, it's all worth it. <laughs>